with the growing population, food's going to become more scarce. We've just got so many people on this planet and not enough food growing capabilities today. is used by the bee for its food and that exchange of pollen from point A to point B in the flower is allowing that flower to either get a fruit or in the case of like a carrot flower there's gonna be seeds produced there and those seeds will then drop to the ground providing more carrots. So bees play a huge role. We need these bees alive and healthy for our future food supply. Most people associate all bees with the honeybee. The honeybee is a European honeybee and it came across with the pilgrims. Slowly through the years, almost every farm had a honey producing bee so they could make more money. And World War II came around. Six million farmlands slowly just dropped into today, that's from the 40s into today, about maybe two million farms. Farmlands decreased, the farmlands got bigger, and monoculture, where you have huge acreage of one crop started to become uh, more prevalent. Chemicals were introduced. These chemicals were killing the native bees and the farmers are looking for something to pollinate now this huge expanse of whatever crop. The only pollinator there was the honey making bee. The honey bee is trying to get every ounce of pollen back to its hive. Honeybee is very efficient at keeping pollen with it to feed its thousand eggs that are laid a day. Pollen's back on the leg, out to the hive, back to the same tree. The honeybee is not a great pollinator. The mason bee, on the other hand, is a solitary bee. It's a fuzzy body. The pollen is dry on its body. She's belly flopping into a flower, getting her abdomen all filled full of this pollen. Off she goes to another tree belly flopping in and the pollen's falling off everywhere so she just follows a 30 minute circuit around this orchard hitting tree to tree and back to her hole. Because of the difference between how they pollinate, mason bees are about a hundred times more effective in their pollination ability. So we did the mason bees in the spring of 2015. As it turned out we had a major increase in our production on our cherries. We produced 85,000 pounds of cherries on four acres of cherry orchard. That's a lot of fruit. The mason bees pretty much doubled my production on cherries. That was a big help in pulling us out of some financial tight spot. A farmer's life is always about risk mitigation. By having only one pollinator, the honeybee, the farmer has more risk. By diversifying your pollination, by bringing in other bees like the mason bee, for example, you're able to ensure that you've got good pollination. Every year we see the cost on, uh, on honeybees going up. Uh, certainly at this point in the early stages of mason bees, those are more expensive, but getting higher production on my blocks is more than an offset for, for that extra expense and a little more insurance that I'll have a crop. We're realizing we don't have nearly enough of these super pollinating bees in our hands that we can actually get them to enough farm fields. To help people realize these bees are there is to um, increase their uh, viability. If you're aware of them, you might not be spraying chemicals in your yard. And just like anyone else, I just thought a bee was a bee. I had no idea until I got involved with bees how much fun mason bees can be and how interesting they are. Crown Bees is a company that supplies mason bees and products online at our website and through stores. I take great pride in, in the bees I raise. Anyone can get involved. I hope that we're going to have a lot more food. We're going to have a huge population that needs almost you know, one and a half times what we've got today. We can do this if people are aware of native bees by raising these bees and then shifting them from their backyards to farmlands. We'll have more food. <laughs>